are these noble ed people and please introduce <laughs> them. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Kevin. And uh, thank you to the participants in today's webinar for joining us. We are thrilled to be partnering with Future Workplace and with CEMEX in bringing this webinar to you. So as for NovoEd, NovoEd is a software company on a mission to make online education more effective and engaging. Founded at Stanford and based in San Francisco, we developed an online learning platform that makes online learning feel more like great in-person learning with applied projects, team collaboration, feedback, and mentorship. Our platform is used by the world's top companies like CEMEX to increase employee satisfaction, engagement, and effectiveness. We are grateful for our partnership with CEMEX and we're deeply impressed with how they are creating a digital transformation to accelerate the capabilities of their workforce to ultimately improve their business and customer interactions. Without further delay, I'm honored to introduce our key partner at CEMEX and their champion of digital learning. Abraham Gonzalez Baez is a learning and development executive with experience in the design, creation, and implementation of learning strategies for a wide range of audiences in several world-class companies. He considers himself a lifelong learner and a strong believer in fostering technology for the good of humankind. Abraham works as an advisor in CEMEX University, where he leads the digital learning ecosystem, as well as the company's learning efforts on digital transformation. Thank you so much, Abraham, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for the invitation, Kevin and Lori. It's, it's, uh, I'm very excited to share with you, and thanks, thanks everyone who joined the webinar. And hopefully, um, uh, this is my first time, so uh, as, I, as I just posted on LinkedIn, I try to do it uh, the most uh, grounded, the most interactive, positive, and, and I think, uh, of, of course, I also have, uh, expect some some questions and challenges for the audience, and I'm very happy to be to be leading this this webinar along with the Future Workplace and NovoEd. So let's get things started. Uh, and this is what well, I call this presentation: "Helping Our Business Becoming a Digital Enabled Learning Organization." It's quite a long title, but I think that's exactly what we're doing. And please let me tell you a little bit about Samex and and what we are. Uh, but first, I wanna I want you, like everyone at the at the attending the webinar, to define the future of learning in a single word. Just one word and please type it in the webinar chat. So hopefully you have the chat window over there and please just uh, what's the future of learning for you? And that could be like personally, professionally, in organizations. Uh, but I, I'm I'm very eager to to hear what, what the audience think of the of the future of learning. So I'm seeing some questions here, some some answers, and one of it it's uh, personalized, invisible. I like that one. Participants, I say mixed as well. Empowered, free, adaptive, continuous, nice. Blended as well. Learner centric. Okay, so so all of those are are agile. I, I I'm I'm loving this uh, this discussion. Open, accessible. So so I like I like that you guys are some something such as free, accessible, open, agile. Uh, they're they're givens, right? Autonomous. I think I think they're they're givens in in learning. But uh, we other organizations have not had the the I think yet. The, the purpose of, of doing it that way. So, so what, I'm, what I'm gonna share with you right now is how we at CEMEX are, are trying to, to get to that future of learning in, in, the, in the present, right? So I see self-paced, and you'll see that uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the things that uh, you're sharing with me here on the, on the web chat are, are really where we wanna go in the, in the future. So, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start by giving you a little bit of context about CEMEX. And you can see that uh, we're, we're a global company. It's one of the largest global building materials company. We have $13 billion in annual sales. Uh, we have a $2.75 billion operating EBITDA, EBITDA 40, 41,000 employees worldwide. And our major business lines are cement, aggregates, and concrete. Uh, we also have presence globally. So we have a presence 
strong presence in Mexico and U.S., uh, also in South America and, and in Europe and Asia a little bit less. But uh, imagine we're, we're almost in 50 countries, so imagine that uh, this is also a challenge uh, for, for the learning for the learning function in CEMEX and for CEMEX University. So, but an interesting thing is that we're here in the midst of a digital transformation and it's very interesting to hear our CEO, how intentional he is, how, how deliberate he is about uh, bringing this digital transformation to CEMEX. And also what I'm gonna share with you is that this is not really typical for global building material companies. I think we're one of the first, or if not the first one, that has been digitizing its processes end to end. And what, what this digital transformation means for our customers and for employees. So we're reducing the administrative burden. We are increasing productivity. We, we, we're gonna, we wanna help our customers to gain more control over their business. And of course, finally, make better business decisions. One thing that I, I forgot to tell you while we were, while, we were, while I was introducing Samex is that we've been around for more than 110 years. So you can imagine that we're a legacy company, of course, we're proudly, we're proudly Mexican, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, it's been a story of growth, you know? Samex is a story of growth, and this digital transformation, what we wanna go is going beyond optimizing. Of course, digital transformation is also benefiting our colleagues too. We want them to spend more quality with our customers. One of our strategic priorities, customer centricity. So it's all about getting them. It's all about delivering them value when, when they need it and where they need it. We also want our colleagues to have better information, more transparency, and less administrative workload. Uh, a couple of, I think a month ago, our, our, our CEO just announced that we reached 10,000 customers uh, in, in our Semex Go platform. So uh, maybe I'm gonna give you a little bit of context of what Semex Go is. So this is a platform that's uh, digitizing all the commercial, all the commercial processes in Semex. So we're starting with the customer first, but of course, to really enable our customers to really be agile, to really be talking about Scrum teams, we have to digitize the course. We need to, and I'm, I'm, I'm explaining this, this slide from left to right. So, so we really need to, engage with our internal customers also in a different way. And what do we need? We need, we need them to learn new ways of work. So, so if, you, if you thought of Samex five years ago, you will never think that we had Scrum teams, you know? Scrum teams that develop software that are very, very common at, at, at digital native companies such as Amazon, Facebook, et cetera. But we're a global material building company. So we have to develop those, those, uh, those capabilities. We also need our employees, our people, to have creative confidence, to, to be aware of emerging technologies. And how we're doing that, we're, we're focusing on, on learning and development and embracing, embracing a growth mindset. Uh, the thing that I wanted to share with you when our CEO announced they 10,000 customers getting to Senex Go is how, how humble and how real and how grounded he is about this, this, this transformation been all the time at day one. And, and there, he, made, he made reference to one of uh, Jeff Bezos' initial letters to uh, state to shareholders. That's, that's uh, the, the main message is not even, it doesn't matter how far Amazon has got, and we, we all know how far they got, you know? He says that they like to think of themselves like day one. And what does that mean? That we really need to have like a learning continuous mode. Like, really understanding that we can do things better and that all the time we can learn a lot. So, so it's very inspiring for Senex University for a learning and development, uh, for a learning development function to see our CEO giving this kind of messages, really, really placing learning in one of the, in one of the things that's gonna get Senex another 100 years. And I don't know if we're gonna be uh, still doing the same business line, uh, of course, but uh, we're going to be venturing to new businesses, venturing to new value offers to our customers. Uh, so, so that's that's very, very, very exciting. And of course, our customers, what do they want? They want clarity, they want agility, they want reliability and personalization, because of course they, we have to meet them with, where they are. They're very used to uh, excellent digital tools or, or excellent services, so we have to get there to to really satisfy their their needs. Uh, this is a, I'm, I'm, I sure, I built this timeline to give you a, a, 
an overview of how fast things are moving. So, so as you can see, I'm just mapping here four years, and it's been a lot of progress, and it's been a lot of uh, mobilization for the university, for, for, for Samex, for its university, and of course for its digital platform called Samex Go. So, so one of the one of the things that I want to learn with you here is that Samex University, as the as the global global learning experiences uh, uh, organization here in Samex, began three years ago with one IELTS learning experience. That means uh, instructor-led training or in-person training, and we reached a thousand learners. So then, our, uh, and by the same time, 2015, maybe a couple of years uh, before our leaders started to think and talk about Senex Digital Transformation. Then in, we, in 2016, we kicked off the development of our digital commercial model. That means digitizing all the commercial interactions that we have for, uh, with our customers to make their life, their life a lot more easy, you know? Uh, and Semex University keeps gaining learners, mass attraction, and, and also a strong partnership with global networks. And global networks are, are I, I really love uh, this concept when I got here to Samex because global networks are networks of people within Samex that are experts in, in certain business lines or system processes that get together and work together and collaborate across the globe to really define new initiatives, new initiatives to save time, to save money, to be more, more efficient, to really do things better. And, and global networks, if you, if you work at Samex, you know, a global network is a cool place to be. So I really love that uh, we at Semex University are very well seen by the global networks as, as their learning arm, as their learning learning allies. So so I, I really love, and I think that's what got us a lot of traction and mass, and of course, trust, and, and, and of course, the, the, the trust of the business. So in 2017, just to give you a, a bit uh, of an overview, we par partnered with MIT CISR to train our leaders on digital transformation. And we were very happy at Semex University to, to really be leading this uh, along uh, for the organization. By then, we had four academies, about 16 IOC learning experiences, and 10,000 learners reached. So what we realized is that uh, scaling and building uh, engaging learning experiences could not be uh, more scaled with IoT, very extensive, very reliable on sources model. So we started building Semex University's digital learning ecosystem. And by the same time, Semex Go was launched. Semex Go was launched globally. So in 2018, Semex Go reached 10,000 customers. So that's, that's a very interesting milestone. Uh, and Semex University kept growing and impacting the organization. By the end of this year, and these are estimate numbers, we will have about five academies, more than 25 learning experiences, both IoT and digital, and, and hopefully we have reached uh, 15,000 learners by the end of the year. I know that this is, this is mostly, uh, this is the first level of, of measure, uh, you know, that, uh, we reach X number of learners, but we're going, we're going all the all the way to really get their engagement, really get get their excited about learning, and really develop a, a mindset about learning in the organization. So this is this is a this is a big big question that we asked ourselves when we're building Semex University digital learning ecosystem and Semex University itself. How do we instill a culture of growth, development, and agility within the organization? So. We strongly believe in cultivating a growth mindset, and, and this is a concept from Carl Dweck's uh, mindset book, and, and I, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it or have read it, but we love the idea of growth mindset, and growth mindset really means that people believe that they have the capability to, co to learn more, and then they, their success is determined by their ability to learn and to really embrace growth and change in their lives so, so looking at growth mindset and a fixed mindset at Semex, and the other, the other part is fixed mindset. So you're born like this, you're born like a, like a very fixed asset kind of a person, and you, you're gonna keep growing from that. You, you, you don't have to really preoccupy for what's coming, but because that's the way you are, and you cannot change. So looking at fixed and growth mindset from a Semex perspective, fixed mindset will be optimizing our system building capabilities, uh, really work within our constraints rather than effort or motivate to expand our thinking and push boundaries. 
And growth mindset is continuously developing new business capabilities. One, one great example uh, that, I, that I think we have at Semex, and of course, Semex Go is a good example of it, being that our digital, digital platform to engage with customers. But another great example of growth mindset at Semex being really grounded is Semex Ventures. So we have, and you can go to semexventures.com, look it up. Uh, so Semex Ventures is an is a innovation arm within Semex. And what they're doing is they're trying to look what the, what the startups, what the small companies, technology companies are doing within the construction ecosystem, and we're investing in them. We're, we're acquiring a, a part of them. We're incubating them. We're, we're letting them grow within, within, uh, within our ecosystem. So, so I think that's a, that's a great example of how Samex is embracing a growth mindset. And, and I, I strongly recommend you to, to look uh, Carl Dweck's, uh, she has a couple of great TED Talks, uh, and it, it really is life-changing. And, and especially if you have kids, you can see that kids are all about growth mindset. They're always exploring. They're all the time uh, trying to get more out of the world. And I think all of us could benefit from, from having this kind of mindset. Uh, but first, and also, I want to ask you, which do you think is the biggest challenge to embrace a growth mindset organization? And I know this is this is a tricky one, but please just choose one, and that's that's the way the poll is set to be. The poll will will be at the right of your at your screen, so you can you can uh, answer it. Uh, I, uh, I put uh, in my answer actually, and uh, Abraham, I, I'd say uh, I don't want to lead the witnesses, but um, uh, I would say. Culture's got to be important. I'm really interested to see what you think, but I'm going to vote for culture. Okay. So let's see where, where, where other people go, but I can see how they're all important. I've already voted as well, and let's see. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to explain so, why each of these four are important, right? Okay, so we're ending our poll, so we're just now going to aggregate the results and present those in just a few seconds. And I see that there's a, a couple of questions in the chat, and, and I want to say to you that we have a Two Q and A segments in the in the presentation for you guys to ask whatever, and I'll I'll do my best to answer. Oh, great! So so we have a kind of overwhelming results, and I know that they're they're going to show them, right, Kevin? Yep. Yeah. No, they are shown. They what? Well, if you can see them, they can see them. Yep. So okay. Great. See. So so it's a, it's a landslide win for culture. You know, almost seventy percent of the of everyone that's attending the webinar. Uh, state that culture is a very, very strong component uh, in embracing a growth mindset and organization. I'm going to share with you, uh, so, so, and I, I totally agree. I also voted for culture. I know that you did, Kevin, as well. I see 6% technology, 20% people. Um, well, people and culture are, are very well related. I see 4% only for resources. So, so that's, that's, I think that's a good thing because culture uh, even if it's not tangible or even if it's not um, a very measurable, we, we can still do things to impact it and to, to change it and to shape it. So I'm going to share with you the, the main challenges that we at STEMX University have. Uh, I don't want to say have because we'll still have them on a certain level uh, regarding each of this. So in culture, of course, you know that we're 110 years old, so we can be hierarchical. And one of the main things that we have taking from this is that failure is not yet embraced as a learning opportunity. And that's what a growth mindset uh, means. Failure equals learning, you know? So, so, of course, equals learning, but of course you have to apply those learnings to, for it to be efficient. So, so that's, that's, a, that's a very important thing. And of course, hierarchy. Hierarchy is, is really strong at Semex. Uh, things are changing, but uh, it can still be a, a challenge along the way. Uh, so regarding Semex University, we were just focused on, on certain colleagues, so managers and above, uh, managers, directors, vice presidents, all the way to the CEO. 
And, and SEMIC University as a brand itself is not really positioned within the wider organization. So, so we're working on that. We're working on branding efforts. We're working on storytelling. We're working on storylining to really position SEMIC University within our people. Because of course, they're, they're, our, they're our final user. They're our learner. Uh, resources, so, so you, I've, I've already told you that our learning offerings rely intensively on a global basis on IoT model, you know, leaders are teachers. And something important to mention here is that uh, these people, these, these trainers uh, are very passionate and they're, they're amazing at what they do and we have more than, more than 200, uh, but they also have other jobs, you know, so, so they are also managers, they also have a team, they also have constraints, and, and they have to split their time to, to really advocate to, to these uh, learning experiences, and they do it greatly, but uh, it, it's kind of a challenge, of course, just to rely on our, on our trainers. Uh, regarding technology, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be very deep on this, but I'm, I'm very happy to share with you some other insights. Our institutional LMS was not a great option. Uh, regarding UX, uh, UI, it was not like super friendly. Uh, an example is that you couldn't access it uh, outside Senex network, for example. So that's, that's a big um, turn off for, for people that really want to learn, that, that really have this self-directed learning. And, and yet, and this is a challenge that we have as well, we're not entirely connected to other technologies being implemented in the company. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit of where are we going with this in the, in the future plan. But uh, just to give you an example, uh, we, want, we want to think or we want learning to be integrated into the work, into the work life, into the daily work life, not, not just seeing it as a very isolated act of, okay, so I'm going to learn on Thursday, but really continuously learn. And, and I think that we can, we can totally do that with some technologies that we have available at the, at, at the company. So I'm gonna share with you now how we approach our challenge. And one, one of the first things that we did is we defined digital learning capabilities, uh, research and piloted as well potential partners on the market. So what we decided is that we wanted all of these seven. So we wanted to be just in time in any device available on mobile, of course. We wanted to be capable of, we wanted our technology to be capable of, of create learning communities. So that's the social aspect of it. We wanted to be capable of, of, of bringing out their brief and engaging media. Uh, uh, that's really important, you know, and, and we, this, this is all connected to meeting learners where they are. I know that we all consume uh, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. So we're very used to, uh, two minute video, 45 minutes video. And so, so I, I don't want to say totally go that way, but we have to get somewhere in the middle instead of uploading a 50 minute e-learning that no one's going to look and everyone's going to skip. We, we're developing brief uh, and engaging learning media. Also, we, we, this is our dream, of course, learning as an exciting experience. So this is all about UX. It's about user experience. It's about user interface. And it's about taking uh, really deliberate design decisions for to meet the learner where they are and for, for them to be attractive and really exciting. So also on the other side, we see that learning analytics are feasible, possible, going just beyond how many people you reach, but thinking about, um, thinking about, I, I, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an example here. So, so you, you took these courses, you might be interested into that, so, so all of that is analytics and all of that is connecting data points so that, so that people and we as a learning function at Summit University can really have a grasp of what our learners want, what they're doing, what they're, what they're seeing, how, how, are, how they are learning. And, and also communication, of course. We, we want it for, for our tool to be really uh, two-way, you know, not, not just ourselves pushing content, but also learners being able to message, to, to think, to also crowdsource content. So, so that's really important for us. And of course, self-paced learning, in, in, in learning is possible. I saw that some of you even said on the future of learning self-paced, right? So, so these are the, the digital learning capabilities that we define. And, and what I want to tell you is that we chose Novoed as our learning environment platform to scale our reach, profitability, and enhance the quality and impact of our programs. 
one of the one of the things that I want to share with you is that we did this uh, this this first decision very intentionally. So so we know that in this first step, it's all about it's all about scaling. It's we I told you that we reached ten thousand learners on an ILT basis model, but uh, we couldn't continue with that, and we're we're still keeping it, but we're enhancing it or really making it more robust with this with this uh, learning environment platform. So it's all about scaling and being faster getting to market and getting to our learners, but it's also about the learning experience. It's also about enhancing how, how people learn. It's also about making really clear, really easy, really seamless. You can get there in a couple of clicks and, and you can face and you can do it at your own way. So, so we're meeting learners where they are. So, so we have a general knowledge of on ed tech solutions out there. And I know that this, this, uh, this field is evolving really, really fast. But something that we have clarity is uh, in these three layers. So we have content, we have LMS, of course, we have e-learning authoring, and we have a VILT, which means virtual instructor led training delivery tools, such as such as this one that that we're using right now. But uh, we have this clarity, and we know that, for example, an LMS does all of this. We understand that the LMS market is challenged. It's challenged right now by contenders that truly excel at really specific features. And we, we like to call LMSs, and not, not, just our, not just the one that we use, but we like to think of LMSs as, as, as really admin-centric. They're really made for the admin to have like a real good time uh, downloading reports and really having a view of uh, everything that's being done. But when you see from the learner side, from the learning experience, from the learner experience, it's not that clear where to go, where to click, how to resume, how to how to share something. So so we wanted to go all the other way and be learner centric. So so we saw that NovoEd is really strong on learning environment and, and we have clarity on that. We know that we're gonna keep uh, making our learn digital learning ecosystem more robust, but we were very confident that uh, what we uh, when we partnered with NovoEd, we were building uh, great learning environments for certain programs that we were gonna build there. It's not that NovoEd doesn't have a portal with user management. It's not that they don't have a database and analytics, but their core, their really, their really strong thing is uh, is creating learning environments, and that's that's amazing for learners. They they really they really get it. They really use it, and they they really engage with each other when when learning on on these programs. So I'm I'm gonna be make a hard stop here. I know that you probably have a lot of questions. So maybe just uh, taking a few minutes to yeah. to get some uh, some questions. And I don't know, Kevin, do you want to choose them, sure. read them? Sure, I, I'll I do my saw best. One, uh, I saw one come up here. Um, so somebody had made the observation that the growth versus fixed mindset is set long before people join an organization. Mm. So is culture really the main determinant? Mm. That's, that's, that's a very challenging one. It's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think it I think it depends. Of course, if you if you have a strong background on growth mindset, uh, when when you when you got to the organization and you're gonna keep doing, it, even if your organization is not really open to that, I think you will naturally do it. So so it's interesting to it's interesting to think on on the person itself. But if you get to a culture where everyone is learning, where, where that's the norm, where, where it's the cool thing to do. I think you can get a bit. Uh, I think the contagious effect can can be more powerful than uh, than really undermining someone that has a, a growth mindset already instilled. Of course, if you have a fixed mindset and if you are right to organization that's really fixed, <laughs> things are gonna stay the same. So, so I I really like that observation. Okay. And um, how about the uh, does Semex have self-paced labs? Semex have self-paced labs. So I'm going to give you a quick example, and it's not a lab itself, but we have a program that's called uh, DPID. So that's Digital Professionals in Development. I, under I understand that these people go through a year of uh, assignments, uh, I mean job assignments, but they, they also have boot camps. I think they're assigned to projects, and we're working with one of them, an amazing UX UI designer that we have in the team right now. So, so they have boot camps, and that that means a week of a week of um, boot camp learning with uh, coders, with uh, change management uh, experts, with a lot of uh, 
people that really can enable them. But they, then they also have like a week or maybe like a lab to, to be enhanced in, in, other, in other things such as coding, a bit more self-paced, using some external content learning. But we don't we we I'm not aware that we have those self-paced lab. We have self-paced learning experiences. I'm gonna talk about those. But uh, I, I I let's see if, if we have uh, that uh, that question. Okay. Later. And then um, what what were the barriers that you heard from leaders about your approach and how did you overcome those barriers? Hmm. That's that's interesting. So so one of the main barriers that we had was okay. So we already have the LMS. And the LMS can do like almost all of those features that we're saying. But uh, and what we how we approached it was really showing. Or I mean, like, hey, okay, so you're saying it can do that. Let's go into it together. Or even asking, when was the time? You, when was the last time you used it? Or have you really heard about? Uh, or or have you heard, really heard about people that really use it constantly and that really it's a promoter? So one of the things that we did as well is uh, commit to NPS, to Net Promoter Score of our learning experiences. And we're, we're measuring it uh, uh, in each of our learning experiences uh, because uh, the, the, main, the main reaction or the quick reaction was, hey, we already have that, don't, don't look into it. But we, we really went into it, we really went into the detail, we really used the tool along with them and they realized that uh, of course, it's amazing at keeping track of ILT session. It's amazing at, at getting reports, but it was not really a very engaging uh, tool for, for learning experiences. Okay. Now, what's your best recommendation for encouraging engagement on a course, uh, maybe self-paced, and everyone is busy with their everyday job? Mm, that's, that's really interesting. So I'm going to share a couple of, uh, of uh, examples uh, uh, ahead, but I'm going to mention maybe a couple of them. So I think the gamification component, giving people points, <laughs> might sound pretty simple, but there's a lot of, uh, I think we at Senex are a competitive kind of culture, and so so that, that has worked out. Also, I think another great advice is leveraging Senex leaders. Uh, all of the learning experiences that we build at NovoEd are very Senex specific, and I think people really relate to watching Senex leaders Semex, Semex people from the business talking about these these uh, these topics about these uh, learning learning objectives that we have. So they are really they really connect with that. Also, one of the things uh, uh, that we have done is do assignments or even peer peer rated assignments. So so for example, you're talking about uh, pricing strategy tri strategy. So we give you a best practice, a couple of best practices or, or techniques that you can implement with your clients, and you have a um, you have a, a space in the in the course to when you get out of your custom with with your customers. If you have a date, for example, you you get out of your customer, you film yourself, and you say, "Hey, this went great. I try to apply these three techniques. First one came okay. Second one went great, and the third one I totally forgot it." And you post it there, and you, then you see people commenting on your video. Hey, yeah, that the same thing happened to me. Uh, I recommend you to do this kind of thing. So we're, what we're doing also for, for engaging people is to crowdsource content. I know that uh, we're, Semex University is not perfect and we don't have all the answers, but we know that our people do. The people that's really on the field, they have the answers and, and they can learn from each other so much. Okay. Now, I know you have another question break, so I've got four or five more, but I'll, I'll keep them for the, uh, your second question break. Yes, of course. Thanks for the great question, guys. <laughs> so uh, what I want to share with you now is, uh, and I call them grounded, you know, because it's not just conceptual. I'm going to show you a couple of things that we've done with very specific uh, learning experiences. And, and, and of course, you're more than, more than welcome to ask. So uh, this is the first grounded practice. So, so we at Summit University are very intentional and and we, we're, we're a small team, uh, but we're very, very, we like to think of on ourselves like a startup or working startup mode, you know? So what we say is also we want to be willing to experiment and of course learn from it, you know? So it's, it's a little bit of like the failure or fail better mindset. So, so 
we're very happy and we're proud to experiment and to see what works. We have had, of course, failures, and but the thing is to to really leverage those learnings and apply it for the next time. So, so we're 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 not waiting to be perfect to put everything out or willing to we build a perfect learning experiences to put it out, but we're we're learning as we go. So so I'm gonna share with you very specific uh, learning experiences that we've shared with with some of the features that we experimented and what we what we liked about them and what we did and what worked, et cetera. So for example, this is a learning experience about that's what LXP means, learning experience. So this is about pricing strategy, for example, and we decided that it was going to be multi-week and paced. What does paced mean? That means that you have to go along with the group at a certain pace. It's not self-paced. It's paced, it's paced along with the group. So one of the learnings here that we got is that eight weeks might be a little long, but, uh, but uh, I'm going to share a little bit more about that uh, uh, further, further on. Uh, some of the things that I was just mentioning, uh, we leverage Stemex leaders from all around the globe. So, so one interesting thing here is that as we were rolling out the IoT version, the in-person version of this training, uh, we knew that we had this uh, digital learning experience coming. So we, when we visited, uh, when, when our colleagues visited, uh, for example, uh, Europe region to deploy the train the trainers, we, we said the trainers, hey, or we said the business leaders, hey, can we film you for 30 minutes to, for, to, to develop a few videos for the upcoming learning experience? So that, that, that thing worked pretty good to leverage Semex leaders from, from all around the globe. And these are leaders from the global network. So, so that, that was that pretty good. We use teams, of course, uh, team collaboration, and people really get engaged and have this sense of, uh, of accountability when they're in a team. So, so we use that and it worked pretty good. Uh, we had real life application assignments, you know, going with a customer, trying to explain them something, trying to get, get a deal with this pricing strategy implemented. Uh, so, so and we, we had them to do some plans and, and you can see on the right on the screen that's on the laptop, you get, we had them to really, uh, do their, their visit plans or really do their, their, their calculations according to the strategy that, that rolled out globally in Cemex. And, and also we did regional cohorts. So it makes a lot of sense at Cemex. Of course, we have three business lines, but uh, all of our regions are very different. So, so we realized that the best thing to do was to do a regional cohort so that people could, could share or could speak the same language, could share about the same practices. Of course, we're trying to uh, I'll say work as one Semex, but but uh, being a regional cohort were, were really, really good. So one of the learned things or, or, or things that we learned from this was the eight weeks duration could, could have been uh, shorter, but uh, we, had, we had great, great response for our, for our learners. And this is, this is rolling out as we speak as well. So this is another experiment and that's, that's, that's totally different from the past one. So this is a self-paced learning experience and it's all about storylining and slide writing. It's open, the, the intention for it, it's open to everyone that has an adsemex.com email and it was built in-house with support of our local partners. So, so the investment for this was not, uh, not, not, not big numbers. And the, the interesting thing here is that we adapted it to a MOOC style from a previously filmed ILT session. The most irresponsible thing we could have done with this was uploading the three-hour session, <laughs> and and so so just seeing ourselves in there in the session and and seeing the facilitator up front with really broad, blurry slides, etc. So what we did is what we totally edited the three-hour session. We realized uh, the exercises that we did in the in the ILT version. We transformed them to to assignments on the on the platform. Uh, we, we, as you can see, we redesigned all the slides because the, the image was not really clear. Uh, and we, we did this pretty fast. I, the, we have a lot of proud in this experience because it's an experiment and it's, it's not part of a global network, but it, it can be part of a culture and values academy. And it's all about uh, writing slides and, and really uh, defining your storylining with, with, uh, with a technique from a, from a consultant that we're partners with. So, so this was pretty fast. And, and also, I wanted to share this one as the last one. So, so this is a 
learning experience for supply chain. This is self-paced as well, uh, open to all areas related to supply chain. We have, a, we have an IoT version right now that's uh, addressed to managers and above, even directors and above. Uh, but we wanted we wanted to to embrace this mindset of, of working as one Cenex and being aligned on supply chain decisions within all areas because supply chain is just, it's not just logistics it's operation it's a lot more areas that that take part in this. So we use one of the things that we experimented here was use of new technology to produce the experience. So we partnered with a with a firm and we use white rooms and light rooms. Um, so. The one you see on the right, it's a white room. It's like a, a television studio, and you can see that we we have the slides on the on the left. We have the presenter. They can they can click on it. They can they can draw on them. So it's very it's a very uh, interesting uh, way of doing it. One of the amazing things of of this uh, technique is that we took only three business days. So that's faster than ever to have all the videos. Of course, we had to edit and to upload them and to build them in the platform. But three business days for filming the whole learning experiences was amazing. And what you see here on the left is the light room. So, so that's where facilitators draw a little di diagram and they, they do a little doodling to explain some concept. And that was, we found that pretty cool as well. And for this, we leveraged two consultants who deliver IoT bootcamp sessions for our internal trainers. So, so that's, that's really nice because these guys are the ones that are training our trainers for, for ILT sessions, but they also help us uh, develop this uh, learning experience digitally. So this is the second um, the second best practice that I, that I want to give you. Uh, it's to make a deliberate effort to build your digital learning ecosystem. And what what does that mean? And I, I like this quote at the at the very beginning uh, of this slide. Uh, we have to think of our digital learning ecosystem as a biological system where innovators, no matter their size, uh, get together in the same way that organisms get together in natural biological systems to discover more valuable recipes for combining and recombining ideas, talent, and capital together. So, so this comes from the from this amazing book, uh, The Rainforest: The Secret to Building the Next Silicon Valley. Uh, and what I'm sharing he with, here with you is that we have partnership with, um, of, of course, a really big firms, really consolidated companies, but we also partner with uh, great local, um, and we call everyone partners. You know, we partner with great, great local partners. We have we have got them together in the same table to discuss. Of course, everyone everyone has clarity what their responsibilities are, what they what they what they're gonna deliver to Samex University. But uh, it's working for the common good. It's working for combining and recombining ideas. And, and we found uh, amazing openness from all of them uh, to, to really collaborate and to really help Sunex University get, get ahead of, of its game. Uh, so these are some of the partners that we have. Uh, and you can see some uh, video production companies, some thought partners such as MIT, Deloitte, some instructional design companies, some technolo uh, technology companies such as Novoet. So, so that's that's a very very nice thing to call them partners and of course treat them as such. Really, really help them to get a get to get a, get ahead of their game. Really challenge them, uh, challenge them, and of course uh, when they propose something and when they when they are thinking ahead of their game, uh, they're very open to propose and to really discuss with uh, with us to 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 really get get uh, get to a more advanced state. This is another one that I'm, I, I really like, and it's, it's a bit um, all over the place, but I think it's really important to map your service journey, thinking on your learner the whole time. And what, what does that mean? We had this amazing workshop uh, following a, a methodology that's called At One, that means actor, touch points, offerings, uh, needs, and I think it's engagement. So what we did here is that we uh, mapped all of the touch points, digital and physical, that our learners have with Senex University. So, digit and and in these phases, awareness, consideration, involvement. Of course, we want we want people to get involved in our learning experiences. We want them to really live it and and be engaged and learn. And of course, engagement. You know, testimonials, reviews, uh, word of mouth. So so it's amazing to to really map this. And when you see them map them in these slides, it's it's a little bit of obvious. Uh, and you say, yeah, of course, learners do that. 
but the, the, the message here is that you as a learning and development function can really take decisions and can really influence in, in what, what the people are, are doing. What are, how are your learnings getting from awareness to involvement? Is it, is it like a, a eight click process or is it like a one click process? So, so it's really interesting to, to think on this and to really think on L and D as a function, as a, as a service, you know? Because learners are already there. When, when, we, when we use uh, Spotify, in a, in a couple of clicks, we get to a playlist. In, in one click, we see what our friends are listening. So, so it's really interesting to, to try to get, get ahead of the game in, in, that, in that aspect. And just, just to wrap it up, I, I really like this, uh, this statement, and, and that means that the learning architecture of today embraces many types of concepts, collects data on integration and activities, uses intelligent systems to promote content and monitor employee usage, and it is personalized for everyone. So, so of course, a lot of you that uh, said the future of learning, and I see a lot of uh, words here, like personalized, intelligent, uh, um, it's, it's used or it's engaging, so it's for everyone. So what I wanna ask you before wrapping up, it's uh, how close do you think your organization is to achieve uh, this statement? And I think the poll's gonna show up right here to the right. Very ambitious statement. Uh, and I know uh, Guillermo uh, Miranda is, is, is uh, very passionate about the future of learning at IBM. And, and uh, has implemented a lot of great new measures there for, for promoting learning. And actually, while we're waiting for that, uh, one of the questions here was, had you considered digital credentials and badges for your university? Because I know IBM has, has been a huge proponent of badging. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do you consider digital credentials badging? That's a great question. Uh, we don't have it on the roadmap. Uh, we don't have it on the roadmap right away. But uh, what, what I can tell you is that we can enable in NovoEd, when someone finishes a learning experience, we can enable for them to share it on LinkedIn. So I know that LinkedIn, for example, or it's the, the mm -hmm. It's the digital business card, it's the modern business card, right? So that's one thing. And of course, we could think of that, of, of badges, because of course we have academies. So we have commercial academy, supply chain academy. So I imagine that everyone that finishes all the, maybe all the foundational programs for commercial academy could get like a, an initial badge. So we have it on the radar and actually it, it's actually on the, um, it's actually on the, on the service journey. Uh, but we're not implementing it right now. Thanks a lot for the question. I, I just love it. And, and also, we, we thought of badges, of course, for our trainers. They're, they just do such an amazing job uh, getting Stemage University word out there and, and learning pro offering out there. So, so yeah, uh, it, it, will be, it will be great. So I think you have your results here, and, and you're seeing a majority of people almost for the, at least three years from now. Oh, so, I'm sorry, I, I don't see the results. The, the, the results are um, in the survey are on the right, and we've seen that 47% of people oh, voted for okay. it at least three years from now. It's, it's oh, wow. How close. So, so most people are three years from now or longer. I, I, like, I like that 30% of will get there in one year to two years. I, I also love that. And that other 8% that's already there, that, that just amazes me. And, and I, when, when I was discussing with, with Kevin and with, uh, with Laurie from Novoed, this, we saw that uh, they're talking, of course, of, uh, of a lot of things, you know, but uh, artificial intelligence being one of them. And I strongly suggest you and recommend you, and we can, we can share it maybe later with a, with a link. Uh, there's, there's an article from Gene Meister from uh, Future Workplace that's uh, all about AI and HR. That's uh, really, really grounded and really, really interesting to see where that can take us. And, and my main takeaway from this question, and I see that 50% of the people say that at least three years from now, is that if we think five years ago what we had regarding to learning, I think it all goes uh, down to LMSs. And we've seen this amazing proliferation of, of, of learning technology 
of, of learning as a, as a very advanced function in the organizations. And I think we will get there sooner than we expect. Uh, for Stemex, I think I, I didn't answer the question, but for Stemex, I'll be somewhere in <laughs> very optimistically between one year to two years, but I'll be very comfortable in saying at least three years. But uh, let's hope I'm wrong and we get there uh, very, very soon in 12 to 18 months. So uh, I think I'm, I'm about to wrap up, but uh, because I want to give you guys time to, to keep uh, asking questions. So this is what we're going to keep doing uh, in the near future. So one of the things we see these three things, activating our organization, embracing a growth mindset, and creating a delightful experience, employee experience. So, but I'm going to share with you what, what I think it's, it's great for Summit University to keep doing, to keep advancing. Uh, we want to keep walking the talk about new ways of work. So we have a Kanban board. Uh, we get 15-minute uh, daily stand-up meetings, five, five, uh, five per week instead of one, two hour and a half week. Uh, so that's that's just amazing to keep the work flowing, to keep the ideas flowing, for for to keep to connecting with your with your peers, with your partners, with your with your people. Uh, we also have learners empathy maps. We 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 de deliver what we call learners persona. So that that's just amazing and very useful. And and L and D team working in startup mode. That's one of the things that I already mentioned. We want to anticipate future uh, organizational capabilities. So so we don't want just the global networks to come and say, hey, Summit University, we're working on this. Please develop a learning experience along with us, of course, and that's going to be amazing. But we want to be uh, whispering to our global networks, hey, have you thought of that? Have you thought of IoT in supply chain? Have you thought of AI in, in San Mexico, for example? So we want to be uh, able to anticipate future capabilities. We want to expand Semex University's opportunities to further organization. Of course, now with the AdSemex.com, everyone availability, we're going to reach about 18,000 people, but we have a lot of uh, people that's on the road, on the plants, the oper oper operational people that ha don't have an at sanex.com. So we want to find a way to get to them as well. Uh, we want to create that delightful employee experience. That So that means employing new learning technology. I, I told you that uh, going with Novo, it was all about scaling and about, um, about uh, em employee engagement. But we want to see uh, when or how, why, and what can we integrate into every day's work life? Not just see learning as an isolate event, but really integrating and exploring new learning technology. And I'm talking about here learning bots, personalization, discovery portals, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, have analytics about our website, and also fostering integration with our technologies that are being uh, implemented in Xenex. I left uh, about five, four, four to five minutes for questions. I know that we have yeah. a few, and then yeah, hopefully let me, let me bundle. I'll I'll ask them to you in pairs. I think there's some are related. So uh, the pair right. here. How, how did you structure your social learning community, and what are some examples of your communities? But also, what did NobleEd do to create a learner-centric experience in the LMS? Okay. Yeah, I love it. So so. I'm going to start with the learning centric experience in the in the and in Novoed. So one of the first things that you do when you go to Novoed is create your profile. So I think and and it, it can allow you to do it importing for example your LinkedIn credentials. So I think it's very and whenever you comment on something, like on something, you can see the little faces of the people and I I think it's really it's really simple because we're kind of used to it. But it's really powerful for a learning for a learning uh, tool to really foster and to really advance and to really ask you to 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 have a face in there, not just to be like an uh, isolated person that's uh, consuming content, but that you can also like, you can comment, you can share. So there's a lot of uh, of the social capabilities that are great at Novoed. One of the another example is the social uh, the team formation aspect. So you can. You can choose teams, you can move teams, you can uh, start to form your own team if enabled in the in the um, in the platform. And of course, you can also uh, deliver some assignments that are team-based. 
you have to deliver with the team. And if, if, if the whole team is not cooperating, the assignment is not done. So, so I really like that. And the other question was the social, I'm sorry, can you repeat it please? Yeah, um, how do you structure your social learning communities? Oh, that's, that's, that's an amazing question. So, so we right now at uh, Senex, and I know that this is part of where, where we're going because we have not structured them per se, but we're going uh, with uh, Office 365. So that means that Jammer is taking a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, the social aspect of Senex and what we're doing as an experiment is have a Semex University channel there. We're going to build a Semex University trainers channel there. And, and everything is flowing like very, very organically. Uh, but we want to leverage also Twitter. And I think, I think it's also, it's a matter of, um, it's a matter of being intentional. And it's, it's a, it's a combination of being intentional and say, I'm going to build a social community, but also let it grow and let's see what happened and learn from that. So, so we're not yeah. quite there yet, but uh, we're doing some stuff on, on Yammer. And ideally, it will be connected to semexuniversity.com and also to, to NovoEd. But uh, we're thinking on that as well. Excellent. Well, I just uh, in the interest of time here, I want to invite um, back uh, Lori uh, to, to thank her speaker. So, Lori, do you have any final thoughts, remarks from, from NovoEd? Well, I'm just really impressed, quite frankly. Uh, Abraham, that was um, just fantastic. You covered a lot of ground in a relatively short amount of time. Um, I think you left uh, each of us with some really great insights. Um, I mean, the context setting was really helpful. I really personally liked uh, the, a lot of the points you made, but certainly, um, like with many big initiatives, the sort of intentionality um, behind the digital transformation um, is, has been, is, and will continue to be uh, key to the success of the continued transformation at Semex. Uh, but I really just want to thank you for um, sharing all of your knowledge and wisdom based on your personal experience at Semex. And um, it was just incredibly interesting, and you've given all of us quite a bit to uh, to think about. So, um, so thank you so much, and thank you for your for your partnership. Uh, and Kevin, in in turning it back to you uh, to close us out here today, I want to thank you for being uh, a tremendous partner in uh, collaborating on this webinar. Um, and finally, um, to the audience, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, if you are indeed interested in learning a little bit more uh, about NovoEd and how we can support your organization in enhancing your learning experience. Our contact information is on the slide in front of you. So thank you very right. much. Right, and, and actually for everyone at Future Workplace, we're really pleased to share that we have also chosen NovoEd to host and deliver our online course using AI for HOR, uh, because it's our belief that HR leaders who master AI will displace those who do not. So this course will profile how HR pioneers are using AI to enhance the employee experience. And of course, all webinar attendees will receive a $100 discount if you want to use the promotion code webinar to experience the NovoEd platform and, and to learn more about AI for HR. And it was some of the features that uh, Abraham uh, pointed out that really helped us choose the NovoEd platform to run this course. And one of those was the social learning and collaborative uh, design that the NovoEd platform builds in to allow uh, different discussion groups to, to engage with each other and, and share and post within the program. So uh, thank you for that, um, Lori, and then NovoEd support on that program. And to answer one of the questions that was asked, we will be also giving a digital credential and badge for the completion of this course that is shareable on LinkedIn because sharing progression and completion of learning is, is one of those important aspects of promoting a culture of growth, development, and agility in, in learning organizations. So again, I will just echo what Laurie said. Uh, thank you, Abraham, for sharing your journey on uh, CEMEX's initiatives to promote this culture of, of learning and uh, we really appreciate uh, all of your insights today. So that is all for today's session, and thank you all for participating 
and I wish everyone a great day.